The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, so I hope that everyone has joined the ones that wanted to come to our today's webinar, and I welcome every one of you at our iSpring Solutions webinar. It's really nice to see you guys here today, and I hope you are enjoying the spring as much as we do. It's really nice and warm weather outside. And today we will be talking about the new features in iSpring Suite 9 that's going to be released next Tuesday, um, April 24th. My name is Paulina, I'm a community manager, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. As a presenter, I have invited our senior technical support engineer, Stefan Burley. Hi, Stefan, how are you doing today? Hi, Paulina. Hi, everyone. Doing better than ever. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks for asking. So Stefan will be very happy to cover this topic for you guys today. And um, in case you have any questions come up during Stefan's presentation, please send them in the question box that you will find on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel, somewhere at the bottom. And this is what it's supposed to look like. You may see it on the screen. And to take care of all your questions today, I have invited my colleague, Dan Whitehouse. Hi, Dan, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we'll get all the questions answered. So, no problems with this. Yeah, awesome. So, if you guys have any questions regarding um, iSpring Suite 9, don't hesitate to submit them in this question box, and Dan will take care of them. Um, also, in addition to this, I have invited my other colleague, Max Ionen, from uh, Customer Success Department, and he'll be glad to answer any questions related to how you can get this new version. Hi, Max. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Belina. Hi, everybody. I'm looking forward to a really productive session, and if I can do anything to make your guys' e-learning easier, just submit a question to the question box. Thank you very much, Max. And again, for those of you who are limited on time, the recording of this webinar will be available sometime after the session. But um, I would like to really encourage you guys to stay as much as possible because this is a wonderful opportunity to ask any questions you have regarding this new upcoming version. Okay, so I think at this point we are ready to begin. So, Stefan, let me please pass the mic over to you as well as the presenter rights. Uh, yeah. Okay. I hope everyone can see my screen right now. Give me just a second. Okay, good. Yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, hi everyone again, and I am very excited to introduce you to iSpring Suite 9 here today, and I promise you iSpring Suite 9 will help you accomplish even more e-learning goals. And here are its highlights, advanced video courses, an extended set of interactions, and new drag and drop questions. There are also dozens of small improvements and new features, which will make the course creation process even smoother. Okay, let's uh, less small talk and let's go straight to the point. First, I'll tell you about iSpring Quiz Maker 9, the quiz creation tool. So iSpring Quiz Maker is now enhanced with a new drag and drop question template for training skills in realistic situations. We also completely revamped the interface and simplified the design of questions and intro slides to create a better workflow. Now let's have a closer look at the new features. Create drill and practice exercises with drag and drop questions. Drag and drop exercises engage learners and help them master complex topics as well as practice professional skills. Students get actively involved in training. They can drag images, shapes and text fields and practice the right actions in a game-like environment. With drag and drop, learners can place elements at the correct position or group items that belong together. For example, you can create a task on product placement or product shelving for a merchandise course or ask employees to put protective equipment on a course character. For example, 
a, a task to drag objects to the appropriate places will help your learners practice weight sorting, select the correct tools for the job, or pick um, direct products for a patient. You can also make an exercise for placing objects in the right order. For example, ask a salesperson to repeat a process of working with objections. Okay, let's go to tests via te uh, train via tests with extended feedback. Give learners extended feedback to help them review their mistakes. Remember a complex topic and improve results. You can explain in detail why an answer is incorrect and provide learners with topic-related facts or even a whole article. If a learner answers incorrectly, you can give them a hint. If they've used all their attempts, provide them with extended feedback. Creating feedback is very easy. Just type your text and insert images, like in Microsoft Word. You can support feedback with images and video, or insert in short instruction on your topic. Then, analyze answers in hotspot questions. In, in the hotspot question, you can now mark all correct and incorrect areas. You will know exactly how the students respond and will be able to improve knowledge on all sorts of complex topics, like advanced equipment and mechanisms. For example, you can check which parts uh, of an air compressor students confuse most often and add detailed explanations to a training course on power tools. Then, easily create tests with equations. With the built-in equation editor, you can add a square root sign, a fraction, an integral, or any other math character right in the question text. Subscript and superscript symbols are right on the toolbar, so you can add exponents or type a simple chemical formula. For example, you can create tests on drug dosages for doctors or pharmacists or in a product info for a pharmaceutical rep. Then, distractors for more complex matching questions. Now you can add distractors to matching questions. Learners will think over each pair of answers and won't be able to pick the correct pairs by just eliminating choices one by one. For example, you can ask learners to match sales stages and actions, or check if they are familiar with professional terms. Seven Likert scale templates to collect feedback fast. With ready-made Likert scale templates, you can merge your learners' satisfaction with their learning path, the quality of training, or their attitude to an e-course. You can also create a new scale from scratch, save it as a template, and use it in other tests. Preset instructions. Prepare employees for an assessment. You can add instructions at the beginning of the test, so employees can ready for their tasks. Explain what sections the test consists of, how many attempts learners have, and how many points they should score. You can also tell learners how to work with the test, how to check out the question list, go to the next question, and finish the test. Even if there is a time limit to finish a test, the countdown will start only after the intersection, so students won't spend precious time uh, reading instructions. Inspiring workspace. In iSpring Suite 9, We've completely revamped the QuizMaker interface. The workspace is now organized in such a way that the most important features are right at your fingertips. Test questions are in the central part of the window, and settings and slide preview are in the toolbar on the right. Now you can make any test question either graded or survey. For example, you can start a test with a short survey, or collect feedback on your content at the end of the assessment. Plus, version 9 support high DPI resolution. It's now easy to create tests for 4K or any other high resolution display, even with custom scaling settings. Test design freedom. Explore various question layouts and polish info slides, feedback, questionaries, and result slides. 
Now all of these are in the visual editor. There is no need to constantly switch between different modes. Just select the player, uh, a layer, and start creating. Designing a test is as easy as in PowerPoint or Word. You can create several text blocks, add images and shapes, and fine-tune transparency, shadows, fill, and outline. For example, add captions to photos or create a unique design for the result slide. Now, let's explore the features of iSpring Cam Pro, the best screencasting tool of iSpring so far. With its help, you can educate your learners with video courses, software tutorials, and video lectures. Mix and edit videos like a pro, if you've, even if you've never done it before. Let's have a closer look at the Video Studio's powerful features. First, picture-in-picture picture for your screencasts. With iSpring Suite 9, you can record two videos at the same time, a screencast and a webcam video. You can show both streams together or easily switch between them. For example, help your hires to master an intricate app by adding your video comments to a screencast-based tutorial. Then, software tutorials with visual hints. When you record a screencast, iSpring Suite automatically detects when you click, type, or use hotkeys and adds visual cues for these actions to the video. You can show your learners how to use hotkeys, explain what each button is for, and teach how to use the app step by step. Video-based courses with experts. With the new iSpring Video Studio, you can bring together videos, voiceovers, and photos and merge them into a professional video course. For example, record a video with an expert and support it with text and graphics. Plus, you can pepper your video with helpful insights to highlight the key points and boost retention. Okay. With the pro part of iSpring Cam comes the professional video studio with robust editing features. Interactive canvas, like PowerPoint slides. Now you can add videos, images, text blocks, and shapes and edit them on the canvas, just like in PowerPoint. Move and resize all the objects to find a layout that fits best for your project. For example, expand a video to full screen and focus learners' attention on the charismatic instructor, or hide a talking head video to show key findings on a topic. Multi-track timeline for audio and video. There is an unlimited number of tracks, so you can add as many layers as you need. With iSpring Suite 9, you can merge videos from multi -tra multiple tracks, add audio, and even show two videos at the same time. Don't worry if you cough or misspeak while recording. You can cut out unwanted fragments or merge a video from several clips. Title screen and annotations. Grab attention right from the first scene. Start a video course with a bright and compelling intro or add infographics at any point of your video. You can use images or create annotations, graphs, and captions right in the video editor. Smooth transitions between scenes. Smooth out the transitions between videos, info slides, and photos. You can adjust transition effects to make the image ripple into videos and videos smoothly flow back into images. And finally, iSpring Visuals. iSpring Suite 9... Stefan. Uh -huh, sorry, Max. I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you for a second. Uh -huh. Uh, we just have a lot of questions about whether you will get version 9 or not. And so instead of waiting until the end of presentation, I just have to mention that. Absolutely. If you guys are 
all set with the maintenance plan and you get all of the updates and upgrades, version 9 will be delivered to you absolutely free of charge right to your main ribbon of iSprint Suites and you will get all of the benefits Stefan is showing us today. And in case your maintenance plan is going to be over really soon or it is already expired, that's a great chance to upgrade your license, charge it with maintenance and save money because right now it will be considered as just a renewal and you won't need to do extra charge for conversion from version 8 to 9. To do this, just drop me a message and I will be happy to assist you further. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Max. Okay, let's get back to our interactions in iSpring Visuals. So iSpring Suite 9 will introduce 12 new interactions for use in a huge variety of training situations. These interactive templates will help you present your training content and engage learners. For example, interactions will help you show product development stages, transaction cycles, or the history of your company. Working with interactions is no harder than heating up a slice of pizza. Just choose a suitable template and fill it out with your text and images. Interactions have a customizable design that is easy to fine-tune to match your corporate style, fonts, colors, and all that. Let's dive into some examples of how the new interactions will help you present course content and engage learners with a lot less work. Tabs. This interaction will help you present well-structured content in a compelling way. For example, in a management course you can explain how to set SMART goals, as you can see on the screen, or describe how a SWOT analysis is conducted. Then, Accordion. With this interaction you can show a call handling procedure, or even organize an online office tour for interns so that they can explore your office and their future workspaces, as you can see on this example right on the screen. Then, steps. Oh, oops, timeline. <laughs> this module uh, will show an employee the key events of your company's history and explain to them how your values were formed. Or, in a product, product training course, a timeline will help you present the product development stages to track changes from one version to another. Then, steps. This interaction will help you train your employees to act automatically in problem situations. For example, you can use steps to provide your tech support with a step-by-step -step guide on how to deal with an angry client as you can see on the screen, or describe the procedure for dealing with a fire in a general safety course. Then, cyclic process. This interaction will be of help if you create courses on industrial processes and safety. For instance, you can show how, to, how part cutting or raw material processing is performed. With this template, you can show any repetitive process. For example, a damming cycle, which is a cycle decision-making process that is used in quality management. Then, circle diagram. In welcome courses, the circle diagram will help you visualize your brand values or show how your target audience is segmented. Then, labeled graphic. This interaction makes it much easier to describe what a complex device or mechanism consists of, show product features, or teach your employees to work with a new software interface. Guided image. Draw your learner's attention to details when explaining how equipment works or when describing a complex diagram. One more use case for this template is a course for salespeople who need to visually present a product to customers. As you can see in this example right on the screen, how to present a car. Hotspot. With this template, you can present a layout of products or components. 
And if your company sells products online, Hotspot is a great way to show regions with various shipping options so that managers can answer questions faster. Or in medical courses, this interaction will help learners to master the structure of human organs and systems. Finally, Media Catalog. Create a catalog to help employees quickly navigate through the products offered by the company. It is a great template for product training in the spheres where a product can be easily shown visually. For example, if you sell clothes, furniture, devices, or food, as you can see in this example, uh, this is a good example if you sell cheeses, for example. Okay, as I said, these were just the highlights of Icepring Suite 9, features that we are especially proud of. There are also dozens of small improvements and new features to make sure your content works perfectly even in the most recent updates of browsers on computers and mobile devices. So I really hope that you are all very excited about iSpring Suite 9 and that you want to get it uh, and you are as much excited as we are here. Paulina, I'm pretty sure that there are lots of questions coming. Perhaps I can answer some of them, maybe technical ones. Thank you very much, Stefan. We really appreciate you talking about this new version, and I hope you guys um, like it and are excited, like Stefan said, as much as we are about it. And first question I would like to ask you about, and I hope you can demonstrate it to us. So Guido asked about circle diagrams and if it's possible to show the editor for this particular visual. Absolutely. If you give me just a second, I'm going to launch iSpray here and show it to you. Yeah, and actually Sue asks, how are the interactions that Stefan just showed developed? Can he show an example? So let's do the circle diagram for that. Absolutely. If you give me just one more second, I need to uh, do this on my end. If you don't mind, uh, I gonna hide my screen a little to do some activation stuff. Maybe there is another question that I can answer in the meantime. Um, just one moment. So far we have um, different comments. Wow, very impressive. Can't wait to start playing with it. Planning it from Becky. Oh. Thank you, Stefan, from Tony. Okay, I am almost there, if you give me a couple more seconds. So Julie asks, when will we see this update? Julie, it's going to be rolled out next Tuesday, April 24th. Bob says, I love the media catalog. I would love to see how to set this up as we have a new product launch. Sure, Bob, hope we will be, um, we're sure we'll be able to help you with that. <laughs> Any other exciting comments for us? <laughs> sure. And there are some of the pricing questions, so I hope that Max, you are taking care of these ones as well. Absolutely. David asks, are there any changes to the content library? And uh, if you don't mind, I just want to answer this question and say that for now, I think there are 50,000 50, characters. I just want to share the article that was released just recently on our website about our amazing content library. And yes, in a year that has been, there has been a lot of change to it and a lot of updates and upgrades. And I will be sh sending um, the link to this exciting news right now. Oh, yeah. so I believe you all can see my screen. So here, uh, just so you see, it is the same old uh, tab in PowerPoint. You can see it here. There are a little changes that I'm sure you'll find even more useful, like some changes in the publishing options and preview options, and now you can set the player. 
uh, right on the ribbon so you don't have to do the publishing menu but let's go back to interactions so the interactions are still available under the well not uh, on the click of the interaction button so I'm just click here and here it is just like you used to do it you just click new interaction and here you find all the interaction types. Uh, some of them are coming soon because right now I'm showing you the better version. But next week you're going to have all of them. So, uh, Polina, please remind me which interaction Guido wanted to see. Uh, was it... Um, circle diagram. Circle diagram. Okay, here it is. So, basically, uh, we have this circle here uh layers so basically the first layer is this bright yellow one then second layer is orange one then there is another layer uh, that is red you can add more layers you can add segments to layers you can move the layers you can move segments you can choose the colors yourself uh, you type in everything here um, I don't know, <laughs> what else should I show? So basically it's really easy, I believe that the user interface is quite intuitive. So if you want to uh, change the name uh, of the whole uh, diagram, you go to properties and here you change the title. You can also uh, choose the position, you can make the text animated, there are two animation types. You can don't do animations at all. Uh, here is a push fade. Here is just fade. And you can uh, avoid animations at all. You can also choose the size, all the colors. So pretty much some of the settings are the same as they used to be. You can also do text labels here. So if you want to change the names, I mean, inside the circles and inside layers and segments, you can do it here. So here you type the title. You can also change the title if you double click on the name of the uh, segment or layer in the preview. You can also change it here and you can do the uh, text here. So you can also use the search bar. So if you have lots of layers, you can um, take advantage of the search bar here. Um, let's just do a little preview. I don't have any text, but just so you know, here how it goes. So pretty simple. You can also get rid of the previous and next buttons so that your users have to click the segments themselves. So they don't do this next, previous, previous, but they have to explore every segment, every layer themselves. I hope that this uh, covers the matter, but if uh, you still guys have some questions, I would be happy to answer. I mean, regarding the, the circle diagram or maybe some other questions, you're very welcome to ask. We have some time here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stefan. And there was also a question from Anne. I'm not sure if you uh, showed it on the screen, didn't catch it, but which visuals would be best for FAQs? FAQs? I, well, it is, there is still an FAQ interaction, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, so basically, here it is. And uh, if you are familiar with uh, FAQ interaction from version 9, you can still use it. And if you have some courses where you use this interaction, it's all going to work in version 9 as well. So your courses of version uh, 7, that, oh, sorry, version 8, that were created in version 8, they're going to work just fine in version 9. So you don't need to worry about that. So the interactions that used to be available in version 8, which are FAQ, Glossary, and also Timeline, I believe, they're still here, so you can use them as well. Thanks a lot, Stefan. And let's move on to the next question. Just give me a moment, please. Huh. Uh... Yeah, there are lots of them. Um, so the, there's a question from Peter. iSpring Player, has it been updated to work with these new features, especially video? Um, <laughs> don't think that I 
completely follow you here. Um, the player, what what do you mean? Uh, the just let me show you uh, here. The universal player that you uh, used to work with uh, in version eight. So yeah, it is still available. So you can choose uh, between two players. Sorry, you you cut out for a sec. Can you uh -huh. please repeat? Oh sure. So yeah, uh, the players they are still available. So the universal player or video lecture player. Uh, so the same players that we used in version uh, eight. There are little improvements uh, to uni the universal player, as far as I know. Uh, the buttons became a little smoother so yeah some some changes in its appearance but overall uh the whole look is pretty much the same um uh, so i'm not sure as again as i said uh, i'm not sure what exactly dan i believe it was a question from dan right dan meant ben dan if you can please elaborate a little and uh, I'm sure I can answer a question. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Uh -huh. um, okay, let's move on. We have <laughs> lots of questions coming in and I sure. hope you guys don't mind me covering them uh, one by one. Okay, so um, just a moment. Uh -huh. So, um, a question from Ian. Uh, there is a lot of new features here. Will there be a user manual or reference manual which describes the program in more detail, printed yeah. or PDF? Absolutely. We are preparing the documentation, so the, the text documentation that you will be able to find on our website, iSprintSolutions.com. Uh, and we also I in the process of preparing some video guides, so video tutorials that we're gonna upload on our YouTube channel. So I'm pretty sure you will be able to master all the features really fast with the help of these videos and the documentation, step-by-step -step instructions and all that. So I don't think you need to worry about that. And as I said, it's pretty intuitive. Everything is there like on the screen. And well, <laughs> if there's still some moments that you just can't figure out, you're very welcome to call us or email us or connect with us with us via our online chat on our website. We are also very happy to help you there. So yeah, I don't think you're gonna have any issues with exploring the new features and um, making them work for you. Thank you, Stefan, and I just shared the video on getting started with iSpring Suite 9. Ah. So I hope you guys can take a look at it and just check it out. All right, so the next question from Mike. Can you link a YouTube video and overlay text with some of the templates you showed? Uh, again, uh, do you want, Mike, do you want uh, these to be... Uh, on the slides, on PowerPoint slides, in PowerPoint presentation, because you can even do this in version eight. So basically you insert a YouTube video here. So you just click YouTube, you insert here a link, you click OK. Then there's gonna be like a window here uh, with a YouTube video. And you can also add some text, uh, some text boxes or anything on your slide and it's all gonna be there. Is that what you want to achieve in the end? If it is, then you're good, even with version eight. But yeah, it is possible, I believe, so. Thank you, Stefan. Uh -huh. Okay, um, question from Becky. Are there, I'm sorry, are there 14 in, new interactions in addition to the existing ones, like the booklet, is it still available? Um, so all the, uh, interactions that used to be in version 8, almost all of them are available in new, uh, with new interactions. So here, as you can see, as I said, actually, FAQ, Glossary, and Timeline, they are all interactions. Another interaction that um, 
uh, was available in version 8, which was called a book, I believe. Yeah. So uh, we decided to uh, get rid of it in version A, in version 9, sorry. And it's going to be available uh, in our additional tool, which is called iSpring Visual. Uh, sorry, uh, iSpring Flip Book. I believe some of you might have a license for it because we used to give out for free uh, about a year ago. So, but uh, I mean, for those who need to create, want to create books, uh, or who have books uh, in uh, their projects that were created in iSpring Suite 8, there are some workarounds that you can use, and we're going to have some articles with step-by-step -step instructions uh, that will show you how you can employ your books previously created in version 8 in your project, in your projects of uh, iSpring 9. So you don't need to worry about that as well. So if you have some books, there is going to be a, a, a way to incorporate them in your projects created with iSpring Suite 9. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is about, we actually had a couple of questions about drag and drop, but before we do that, there is a question from Helen, and it's from Max. Could you... Uh, I'm sorry, could the information about renew and maintenance plan be repeated, please? Max, can you assist on this one? Absolutely. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, if you guys have active iSprint Suite full service or you have iSprint Suite charged with maintenance plan, you will get everything you've just seen absolutely free of charge and delivered right to the main ribbon of your iSprint Suites. If your maintenance plan is going to expire soon, which you can see at your account on iSprintSolutions.com, it makes sense to renew it this week just so that you can save some money and instead of paying for upgrade, just pay for the maintenance plan package. We are always happy to check everything in a personal manner, so you're welcome to drop me a message and we can check your accounts and so what we should do to make your e-learning go even better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. Okay, let's uh, move on with our questions. Okay, so yes, Stefan, drag and drop. Um, could you please explain how did you do the door shelf? Is it possible? Uh, okay, just give me just a second, please. Um, sure, sure. I'm gonna, I don't have images that I can use, but I'm going to show you just how it is done mm -hmm. here. Basically, here, quiz maker, I open it, here a question, I click on a question, and here are all the question types that I can insert. I choose drag and drop, and here uh, I go to slide view, here is uh, what my slide going to look like. I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with the concept of form view and slide view from the previous versions of iSpring, which is iSpring uh, 8, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, in the correct matches, uh, I click on proceed, and here I just insert pictures or shapes. For example, and here is a square, right? And then I'm going to insert a oval. And then I'm going to insert some text boxes. And here I'm going to type in square. I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see it. And then I'm going to insert also a text box, another text box, which is oval. oval. And I'm going to make it a little bigger. And then I have four figure, well, four figures or like four tag, well, two tag boxes and um, two figures on my slide. And for example, in my drag and drop question, I want the users to move the square uh, tag box to square and then the oval text box to the oval figure, right? Then I go to um, the form view. I choose first the target. 
then I choose the square that I created and I choose the oval that I created. And to the dragged items, so uh, drop target is actually where I'm going to move my objects to. And drag items are the objects that I'm going to move. So here the correct um, object that I want to move to the uh, square uh, object is square. Course. And the another, the oval, it is oval text box. So here I match them and then let's preview it. And basically here, uh, okay, let me do it wrong one more time. I moved square here. Of course, it's not a square, but it is an oval. And then oval, I'm going to move to the square. I'm submitting. Oh, it's wrong. Okay, well. Of course it is. And then I'm going to do the correct. And then there is oval and square is here. And then I just submit. Yay, I'm right. So I showed you a really basic example. This is not the examples that I showed you in their, in their presentation. I can just show you them again so you have an idea of what kind of uh, quizzes you can create if you have more imagination than me right now. <laughs> still. So here basically the same, we created like this uh, uh, shelf here and we put in bottles to the right places. So the bottles here that are in the shopping cart, they were drag items and then drop, drop targets, they are on the, on the shelf, they were boxes on the shelf. Or for example this uh, literal uh, quiz here, uh, so the the <clears throat> drag items were these uh, papers here, four, uh, three of them, and then the drop target was this square. So we have to uh, drag the right item to the right place. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Stefan, um, and um, for the tr another question, for the drag and drop question, can we have multiple drop targets for the same drag item? Absolutely, it is possible. So let me create, for example, another square, well, another text box. Um, this is going to also say square. Give me just a second. Uh-huh. And then in the form view, I'm going to have another square in the drug items and I'm also going to uh, assign it to another square. So here, two different drag items can belong to the same target. As you can see here, okay, so oval can be here and then the square can go both here. You see they're a little overshadowed by each other, but it also it is possible to change. And this is can be changed in here. Uh, so you can snapping type can be chosen here. So stack random, stack cascades, st snap to center and tile. They're all pretty much different. Let's do stack cascade. Then it's going to look like this in a cascade. And I can also show another snapping type, which is snap to center. So basically you need to a little um, do some testing here if you want to. I mean, everyone has different type of quizzes, so they are not like, all like this, right? So uh, you got to experiment a little here and see how it works best for your quiz, because all quizzes are different. So yeah. Uh, but it is possible to um, to answer your question. Yes, it is possible to create uh, multiple drag items and assign them to the same drop target. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks a lot, Stefan. And uh, another question is about Video Studio, and I am not sure if you'll be able to demonstrate that, but I hope that you will. It's from Julie. Can you show how we can record our screen when showing how to perform a function? I think you were showing an example of creating an email. Sure. Uh, I think I can demonstrate it to you. It might be a little complicated, but still. So basically, uh, here you create a new recording. Here you choose the area that you want to record. It can be your screen, it can be your camera, the web camera, or it can be both. 
Then in settings, uh, you can capture mouse and keyboard activities. This way you record all the annotations automatically. For example, you right click on something on your screen and there is, uh, it shows some menu, some kind of drop down menu. And then iStream automatically adds a text box uh, which says right click on your mouth. So every action that you have, that you perform uh, during the screen recording, it's all going to be annotated with the help of text boxes. And also you have, you're going to have your uh, uh, mouth cursor highlighted. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that your user is going to see everything that you do on the screen during the recording. Let me... Try to do some recording here. I'm not sure it's gonna work pretty well, but still. So, okay, let me resize a little. Okay. Um, now, browser is a bad idea to record this. Give me just a moment. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the full no application better actually. So here I'm recording the whole uh, screen of the uh, browser. I'm going to like open a new tab and then type something like isprintsolutions.com. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to, I don't know, close tab. And then I'm finishing my recording. And here, my recording. So here are the canvas. Uh, that way you can edit everything, pretty much everything. Okay, I recorded my voice. I'm going to delete it. But here, pretty much, uh, your mouse is highlighted. You see these text boxes? Everything that I'm typing is all is there in form of text boxes. And these text boxes are shown here. You can also make them bigger, so you can mm, show them a little longer. You can show, you can just delete them all together, all these text boxes. Uh, you can also make them more visible. You can change the text uh, that is uh, there in these um, text boxes. Just I'm gonna show it to you. And Stefan, is it possible to record voiceover separately for video? Question from Alice. Absolutely. You can record you can record them here. You can record them in some other application, uh, not in iSprint. You can also uh, record it in iSprint and then uh, save it uh, separately as an mp3 file and then insert them here so basically everything the timeline that you have here you can insert mp4 recordings you can insert mp3 recordings here so it's all going to be here uh, so there's no need to change um, to, 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 to there's no need to record everything here uh, that's what i'm saying you can employ some other uh, files, um, audio files or video files that you already have. It's not necessary to record them in iSpring Cam. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, and going back to, I think, to the beginning of your presentation, there is a question from John. This is an impressive presentation. What are the maximum number of segments per layer? Do you know by any chance? Uh, or maybe Dan, maybe you know? In in which part of iSprint? That's my question. In QuizMaker? Uh, because you can do layers in QuizMaker, I believe. You can also do layers on slides of PowerPoint. There are also layers here in iSpring Cam Pro in the Canvas um, Studio. But yeah, the, the number of <laughs> yes to the John studio says uh -huh. in the circle diagram. Ah, uh, circle diagram. Uh, actually, I 
I'm not sure if it was tested, uh, but I'm pretty sure there is no limit actually. <laughs> but you can. Oh wow! It. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. We can even test it right now, just out of curiosity, I believe. But yeah, I don't think that there are actually any limit. I mean, it might look a little clumsy on your screen, but yeah, as I see. Oh, there is a limit, actually. <laughs> okay, that's news to me. But yeah, eight layers, I believe, is the limit. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Would that work for you, John? <laughs> yeah, he says thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm, there's a question from Ellen. Are the new interactions exportable to a format that can be sent to translation companies? For example, it was possible to export scenario text to a Word document. So anything like that available by any chance you know? Um, I don't think so, I'm afraid. So you would need to you would need to copy all the text manually somewhere and then send it to your translators and then they just send it back to you and then just going to manually insert the translation, I believe. So no, not for visuals. I, I know that it is possible for dialect simulations, but for visuals at the moment, it is not available, this option. But that would actually be a pretty useful feature. Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like a good feature request, sure. even. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. And a question from Bob. Has anything changed with dialect simulations? I don't think so, no. <laughs> I think they're mm -hmm. perfect as they are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you, Bob, have any future requests regarding the simulations, could you please send them here in the chat so we can forward them to our product development team? This would be very helpful. Makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, just going through the questions. So, question from Mate. I'm apologize if I mispronounce your name. Um, hello, can we create a user-controlled screencast? Um, so the screencast, uh, when you insert it on, on a slide or your PowerPoint presentation, it's going to be a video-like. So they can actually well control it uh, in, in a way. So basically, they can rewind it, they can uh, go to some previous place if they missed something. So if, is that what you need? Or maybe you have some other ideas in your mind? Uh, what kind of control do you want to give your users over the uh, screencast? So that depends on that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there's also a question from Ian. If we already have Visuals book created with iSpring 8, how can we edit or update them with iSpring 9? There is going to be an article. So I'm I'm actually the one who is writing this article at the moment. So yeah. <laughs> Write it faster. Be... Yeah. <laughs> well, 9 is not out yet, so what's the point? But yeah, there's going to be an article on our website, I believe, or mm -hmm. in our on our blog. Uh, which is icepringsolutions.com slash blog, I believe. So yeah, it's going to be either there or in our help docs. But yeah, you will be able to include uh, your book created in version 8 on a slide of version 9. Okay, Great. awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you very much, Stefan. Absolutely. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Ah, oh, too many questions. Uh, yeah, and by the way, thank you very much, Max and Dan, for helping us out on covering these questions. You've been of a great help today so that we're not swamped with them during the Q&A session. Okay, so Jeremy asks, who should I email about licensing support plans? And I think that that's the best for you to email to Max, is that correct? Yes, Jeremy, please do. And so for your convenience, I will leave my email in the chat again. 
Okay, wonderful. And you're, and you're also welcome to book my calendar for a quick call. Here is the link to do that. In case you want to do outside hours, just drop me a message to the email and I will always do my best to make sure we find the right time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. And okay, so we let's have about two more minutes for covering the questions. And if we don't cover all of them, we will definitely get back to you after the webinar. So um, Francis asks, could you give us more information about using math symbols in QuizMaker? Absolutely. So uh, um, if you remember, in version eight, if you wanted to. I'm sorry, Stefan, you just cut out. Oh, really? Sorry. Could you please repeat? Yeah. 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 So if you remember, in version eight, you have to, you have, you had to create. Well, you still have version eight, so you have to um, create a question, and then you had an icon here to add an equation. And when you click this icon, it launched Microsoft Equation Editor, which came from the Microsoft Office package. In version 9 we added our own built-in equation uh, equation editor uh, so you don't have to use the Microsoft tool anymore. So basically uh, if you want to create an equation you just uh, select the place where you want to add it. It can be either the question or one of the answers or it can be just a uh, standalone text box on a slide, right? And then basically just click equation here. And it's gonna give you a vast uh, choice of all the math science. I'm not really good with math, so I have no idea what all this means. But yeah, it pretty much uh, is the same as Microsoft's tool, but I think it has some additional symbol sets here that you can use to create formula and by the way all the formulas that you had in your previous quizzes uh, if you if you if you know i'm not sure if you know that everything that you created there it was saved as a picture but we created a special mechanism here in icepring suite 9 that's gonna convert your uh, equations in, from pictures from the PNG format in real equations that you can edit here. So you don't need to worry about that as well. So everything is there. Um, and it's pretty easy to use uh, the equations, I mean. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Again, guys, let me please tell you one more time that the recording to, uh, recording of this webinar will be available sometime after. I will be doing a mailing to all our attendees and also registrants so that you guys have something to watch after our today's session. And also, I just made a decision. I will be also sharing with you all the available um, articles and documentations, maybe videos that you have more information about this upcoming version by Tuesday. And also, I just wanted to ask you guys because to, it would be very interesting for us to know what um, new features are you mostly excited about? If you could quickly share with us in the question box, that would be Awesome, because we are dying to share this information with our product development team and our developers and our designers and our marketing and everyone. So, yes, if you could just quickly type if you're excited about uh, new questions in QuizMaker or a new video a studio or a new visuals, that would be awesome for us to know. So, yes. Okay, and while um, Dan and Max are still taking care of some of the questions <laughs> that you sent in, I think that Stefan, you took care of all the questions that were addressed um, to you. So yes, I think that this was a great session. Glad to hear that you guys are so excited about this new upcoming version. We are excited as well. Maybe there were some of the questions or some of the informations, some of the information you, Dan, and Max would still like to share with all our attendees before the webinar is over. 
I mean, I would like to thank everybody for such a productive session. Oh, it's been a lot of really great questions. I hope that so people received as much answers as we were able to answer. And so you can always let us know if there is anything we can do for you. Just use the email we provided you with today or contact our support or sales department. Yeah, yes, let me just... Of, yeah, there were a lot of questions and some of them just maybe thinking, well, is it, a, is it an option or not? Why don't, in any case, it's support uh, uh, is always at your service and if any new questions come up, feel free to call us or just your email. Because you know, uh, some features are subject to change and that's when we use will be in the, first, in the very first build of the next gen version. So keep in touch. Thank you very much, Dan. And I just shared uh, the um, email address, support at icespringsolutions.com. <laughs> and while you were talking, I get lots of uh, comments like the support from iSpring is outstanding, it's top notch, and such and such. So yes, uh, we are always happy to help you guys. OK, so um, at this point, I think that we are ready to wrap up. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for, this w for making this webinar happen, by the way. Um, for making this webinar happen. Thank you guys. Thanks, Stefan, Dan, and Max. I really appreciate your help. Thank you, Polina, and thanks everyone for attending. It was a pleasure. Have a great yeah, one. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you at our next webinar. And the details I will be sharing very soon with you. Take care, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.